So this is why I like the black base. Black basing really shows with the glossy black. I'm sure you can see that. With the glossy black, it really shows up areas that the flat gray primer just doesn't pick up. So I have a lot of work. See right here? I've got a lot of work left to do. Most of this black base is going to be wet sanded off. I have begun putting down the RLM 76 light blue. You'll see that the undercoat is not an even consistent coat. There is some of the silver remaining, some of the black guide coat remaining, and some of the different colors from the putty that I used. I left it this way on purpose as I wanted to try to get some shading effects in the top coat as I put down the, the RLM 76 and the other colors that come later. This is still a technique that I'm working on, trying to get better at. I obviously don't want to put down a whole lot of paint because as we all know in the RC community, paint adds weight and weight means the model doesn't fly as well.
I used freehand masks for most of the painting and masking on this project. I used either the manila card paper you see here or the foam core board. I used the foam core board in areas where the pressure from the air gun might have lifted the manila paper and given me overspray. I can get either a soft demarcation, which is most of the lines on this model, or even hard demarcation lines. These freehand masks offer great versatility. They're easy to use. You can cut any shape you want. They're quick. You don't have to fool with masking tape and masking paper. And you can get a hard or a soft edge depending on how far away you hold the masks from the surface.
I believe on the real aircraft that the dark green that I'm spraying now was actually put down over top of the gray. That's why I put down a gray coat on top of the Ford fuselage. Now I'm going over with the dark green, but I'm going to spray it in sort of a stabbing motion and with lighter layering so that I can try to get some of that gray to show through the green, giving somewhat of a splotchy mottled effect. So we're down to painting the tiger stripes. Now this is going to be a do or die moment right here. I really only get one shot at doing this. I did some practice. Make sure I had the good paint flow, right viscosity of the paint, right pressure, all that good stuff. The trick was to try to get the stripes without getting a lot of overspray or spatter. Using my depiction of the aerial airplane, I've lightly drawn in some pencil lines, and this is what I use as my guide. If I can just cover up these pencil lines, I think the paint will be thick enough. And it goes all the way, it's hard to see on the gray, but it goes all the way back to here, and then finally back here at the tail. Fuselage stripes after the canopy were later gone back and added some points at the bottom of the fuselage. I didn't like the way all the stripes kind of ended in a, in a round shape at the bottom, so I went back in and added some points. The last thing to do was to make a cap for the front end and so I made this out of uh, clear plastic. Uh, that'll be the next video coming up show you how I did that. It's basically just the plunge method of making a, a plastic part. So I, I just painted it so it's still a little bit uh, damp. When it's dry, I'll go ahead and glue it on the front here. It's a pretty good representation. It's not perfect, but it's a good, pretty good representation.